Hi, my name is Xin Huan, and I am a master student from RMIT University. My teammate is Ilham, Damiano, and Xiu Zhen, Jenny. Widespread fake news has an adverse effect on economy, democracy, and public health. One good time to see how fake news can affect the society is during the U.S. election. It is a time when everyone could encounter with some fake news. And I guess this may be the reason why Clef Pan takes profiling fake news spreaders as their 2020 author profiling task. The data site given by the pan has 300 users, and each user has 100 tweets. We don't have any timestamps or user profile data like age, gender, and political bias. The users are divided into two equal size groups. One group is labeled as fake news spreader profile, while another group is labeled as non-fake news spreader fake profile. But we don't know which group of users are actually fake news spreaders. In addition, almost every tweet has at least one URL. But we don't know what the URL is about or where the URL is linked to. In summary, we approach the profiling fake news spreader challenge with the tweet contents only. Since the tweet contents are the only thing given by the Clive Pan, we have to extract all of our features from the tweets. This is the reason why our architecture has two parts. The first part is tweet level representation, where we get some features from every tweet. The second one is our user profile level rep representation, where we will do the data aggregation and classify the user on the user profile level. After talking about the big picture of our architecture, I want to then talk about our tweet level representation and feature extracting. We firstly evaluate the sentiment of each tweet, and the, the tool we use to evaluate the sentiment is Vader sentiment. And the evaluation result is a number between uh, is a number in the range between negative one and positive one. Negative one means very negative, while positive one means very positive. For emojis, due to the time limitation, we only calculate the number of emojis in each tweet. And for hashtag, similarly, we also count the number of it. The reason why we choose hashtag as a feature, because it is a way of propagating. We are also modeling the political presence into our system because we want to include the political bias in our model. The way we do the political presence is only counting the number of tweets that contain the word Trump. And the reason why we choose mentioning Trump as a political presence is because of two reasons. The first reason is that the word Trump is a wide spread feature in the data set. More than half of the users mention at least once about Trump. Secondly, as you can see in the box plot, the frequency of mentioning Trump in the label 1 user is much higher than the label 0 user, which can possibly give us a good result of prediction. Last but not least, we want to introduce our TLSP classifier. TLSP stands for Tweet Level Spreader Prediction. For TLSP classifier, we use a language model. Instead of combining all the user tweets into one long text, we make a prediction on a tweet level representation. With this approach, we are able to have a much larger data set. Remember, we have 300 users, each user has 100 tweets, so the data set is 30,000 users. We train and test our TLSP model with labeled tweet. And the mapping rules of our TLSP model, TLSP model is like this. If a tweet is written by a fake news profile, we label it as fake news spreader profile. 
and if a tweet is from a non-fake news spreader profile, we label it as non-fake news spreader profile. After the mapping, we will feed the labeled tweet data to a GRU structure plus birdwood embedding to get a fine-tuned bird model that can make a prediction on whether the user is written by a fake news spreader or not. One thing to note here is that we use the same data to train the TLSB classifier and the user profile level classifier to avoid the situation of, of overfitting. After extracting all the features from the tweet level, we can then do the data aggregation and start to classify the user on the user profile level. The way we do the data aggregation is calculating the media, mean, and the standard deviation for every feature for every user. After the calculation, we feed the aggregated features into a user profile level classifier and get our final test result from tenfold validation. The user, the user level classifier we use is a sklearn package, svm dot svc. The task has two parts, English and Spanish, but we only finish the English task due to the time limitation. The final public result of our system is 72% accuracy. And as you can see in the ranking list, we are at the tier four accuracy. The public result of our system is 2% higher than our cross-validation result, which is possibly due to the larger training data site. The result of our system is worse than the result from the best baseline, which uses a low dimensional representation for language variety representation. But our system outperformed the second best baseline on the test data site. We also compare our work to other people's system. The best result of English has 75 accuracy. They are modeling n-grams into their system and we also want to see the impact of result if we modeling n-grams into our system. Our future work would be, firstly, instead of just thinking about positive and negative, we want to evaluate the influence of different emotions, for example, hate, fear, anger, joy, and surprise. Secondly, we also want to model in the political bias, where we will link the emotion and other features to the political presence, and in particular, Trump. Thirdly, we want to try other models, like our Berta or GPT-2, or even make our own neural network structure to improve our TLSP model. Last but not the least, we want to expand our work on other language, for example, Spanish. Thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, please ask me or email me. Besides, besides the slide, on the, on, the, on the bottom of the slide is my email address and our source code. Thank you.